In this video, we're gonna be looking at eight versus 16 versus 32 versus 64 gigs of RAM for using Photoshop. First thing we're gonna dive into is a basic explanation of RAM. If you wanna deep dive on all the different intricacies, you can click or tap the screen here. But just so this video, so we're all on the same page, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. And basically how it works within your computer is every time you open a program, your RAM's gonna pull from your RAM memory base. So let's say you have eight or 16 gigs of RAM, you open up Google Chrome, you're gonna use two to five gigs of the RAM. Now, eventually, if you open enough programs, you'll run out and your computer will start to slow down, start to kind of parse out and just divide and it just gets slow. It's just not a good scene. So you want to have as much RAM as your daily use of your computer. So let's say you open Google Chrome, Photoshop, and Lightroom. You're going to be using anywhere from about 10 to 16 gigs of RAM to run that process. So that's why for Photoshop, I recommend eight gigs at a base. So if you just open Photoshop, you'll be good. You'll have all the performance that you need. However, if you're going to be doing some more multitasking, I recommend 16 for a smoother experience with multitasking. Say you're going to be doing some research on Google, you're going to be listening to music on Spotify or iTunes Music, and then you're going to be working in Photoshop and Lightroom or a couple of different of the Adobe Design Suite tools. You want to have room so you don't have to be opening and closing files all the time. All right, let's move forward and check out some benchmark results. For the Photoshop tasks, as you can see for 16 gigs of RAM versus 32 gigs of RAM, you can see that the timing for each of these tasks drops by about 25 to 30% with 16 versus 32 gigs. So we have a 738 score with the HP Pavilion gaming laptop. And then once we upgrade the laptop to 32 gigs of RAM, we see that score jump up to 803. So it's about a 10 to 15% increase in performance based on the timings and the overall score. Now, moving forward into the multiple laptops with multiple configurations, this will give you a much broader perspective on how each of these steps affects your RAM upgrades. Now, a quick disclaimer, the eight gig score is based off of having a single channel eight gig stick in place, whereas the other ones are all dual channel. So you have two eight gigs for the 16, two 16s for the 32, and two 32s for the 64. So if you were to use dual channel four gig sticks, you might see an increase in performance by roughly 75 to 100 points. So that can give you a little bit more of a perspective. I just simply didn't have that configuration option available to me. The reason I can make that uh, guess, so to speak, is because when I tested dual channel versus single channel, I saw a 100 point difference between dual versus single channel. Now, moving forward to speed, how big of a difference does speed make for these tests? Now, both configured with two 16 gig sticks of RAM equaling 32, 2400 megahertz versus 3200 megahertz. You can see that there's a slight difference in performance. Now, keep in mind that the latency is different from the 2400 megahertz to the 3200 megahertz. So if we were to run the CL14, that's a lower latency. And of course, if you want to deep dive into all this, I have a video linked here. Definitely check that out. It'll explain more of this in depth. But for the basic knowledge, latency is basically the timing in between how long it takes your RAM to respond and initiate a command, okay? So if I were to upgrade the 2400 megahertz at a CL14 to 3200 megahertz, we would see more performance out of that RAM configuration. Now the question is, do you order from the factory a computer already upgraded, good to go, or do you buy the computer and then upgrade it yourself? Now the four things that matter when considering RAM is the amount, channel, single versus dual channel, speed, the megahertz, and the latency, which is usually classified as CAS, CAS, or CL. Okay, now most vendors will tell you the first three, the amount, the channel, and the megahertz. However, they often leave out the latency, which is an important point of the equation. Okay, so with that in mind, my personal preference is to order a laptop from the factory with kind of the base level of RAM. That is if the laptop is upgradable. So something like the Razer Blade 14 or the Asus Rogue Flow X13, those laptops are not upgradable. Okay, also the MacBook Pro with the new M1 chip, not upgradable. So I'm talking about laptops that are upgradable post purchase. So what I would do, because we don't necessarily know what latency is coming in a laptop from the factory, is I would order a laptop with kind of just the minimum 
RAM configuration, and then I would upgrade it once I received it. Now, a great option is Team Group. They're actually the ones who sent me modules to run all these tests. They have great prices, 100% lifetime warranty, and a variety of speeds and latencies. Now, let's put this knowledge into real life action, and let's say you're gonna order your RAM modules. So I'm gonna head on over to Amazon and look at two different configurations from Team Group and help you choose the right one. First and foremost, we have the Team Group T-Create Classic, 16 gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz, a CL22, okay? Versus the Team Group T-Force Zeus, 16 gigs of RAM, 3200 megahertz, at a CL16. I would personally be choosing the Zeus at 3200 megahertz with a CL16. You have a nice high clock speed on the RAM and a low latency. That would be the best pick. Now, personally, I would not go single channel since I'm here ordering, I would go ahead and order both 16 gig sticks and get a dual channel 32 gig setup. But of course, as your budget allows, you can make that decision yourself. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future episodes. Thanks for joining. I'll see you here in the next one.